So good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> let me know if you need me to speak louder, if the sound is okay. Um, thank you so much for joining wherever you are, whatever time zone you are. Um, kudos to the West Coast who get up so early on a weekend morning. Um, this is my first time joining this community. Um, it's That's really dear to my heart. Um, so really, really, really grateful to be here um, this morning. Um, <clears throat> and if you can turn on your video on um, until we get to the meditation part, just so we could be in community together, even digitally, just so we could connect to each other's energy, faces, our homes, our different backgrounds, um, sharing this morning together for me on the East Coast morning. Um, <clears throat> and I'd like to start with any teaching with a couple acknowledgements. So I'd like to start with land acknowledgement. So if you um, have know where you are in terms of um, native land, the tribes that you're on and the land that you're on, feel free to type in the chat and share. Um, I'm in, in Manhattan in New York. We're part of the Lenape tribe that covers Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania. Um, and we also want to take a moment to acknowledge the um, lineage of meditation. That this lineage that we are from inside meditation came from Asia and India, um, has been stewarded by practitioners in those lands um, all over China, India, Japan, Southeast Asia, Tibet, um, for many thousands and years and generations. And then lastly, if we want to call in our own ancestors, you could silently say their name, um, or if you don't know, just feel free to just kind of feel the energy and calling in their energy and protection. So we want to call in our ancestor for their guidance and protections and acknowledge the land because we want to know we because we're grateful and to acknowledge that we're part of a long stream of consciousness in time and ground us in time and space that we know that we're part of a larger web of many generations of wisdom and resilience that we are here today. So the more this more uh, week, I'm, I think many for a lot of us are inspired by Amanda Gorman's beautiful poem and the inaugurations. Um, so I thought I would explore her another poem that she wrote in April 2020 last year in the beginning of the pandemic. It's called The Miracle of Morning. Um, so I thought I would share that poem with you. And I think there's a lot of um, themes that kind of reverberate through that inauguration poem as well. I thought I would be awakened to a world in mourning, heavy clouds crowding, a society storming. But there's something different in the, on this golden morning, something magical in the sunlight, white and warming. I see a dad with stroller taking a jog Across the street, a bright-eyed girl chases her dog. A grandma on a porch fingers her groceries. She greens as her young neighbors bring her groceries. While we, may while we might feel small, separate, and all alone, our people have never been more closely tethered. The question isn't if we can weather this unknown, but how we will weather this unknown together. So on this meaningful morn, we mourn and we mend. Like light, we can't be broken even when we bend. As one, we will defeat both despair and disease. We stand with healthcare heroes and all employees, with families, libraries, greater school artists, business restaurants, and hospitals hit hardest. We ignite not in the light, but in lack thereof for it is in loss that we truly learn to love. In this chaos, we'll discover clarity. In suffering, we must find solidarity. 
for it's our grief that gives us our gratitude. Show us how to find hope if we ever lose it. So ensure that this ache wasn't endure in, pain, in vain. Do not ignore the pain. Give it purpose. Use it. Read children's book. Dance alone to DJ music. Know that this distance will make our hearts grow fonder. From these waves of woes, our world will emerge stronger. We will observe how the burdens braved by humankind are also the moments that make us humans kind. Let each morning find us courageous, brought closer, heeding the light before the fight is over. When this ends, we will smile sweetly, finally seeing in testing times, we became the best of beings. So um, the title of the poem is called The Miracle of Morning. Um, I really love um, some of these lies, lines, um, like light, we can be broken even when we bent. We unite not in the light, but in the lack of thereof, for it is in loss that we truly learn to love. In this chaos, we'll discover clarity. In suffering, we must find solidarity. A few more lines. Do not ignore the pain, give it purpose, use it for it's our grief that gives us gratitude. And kind of similar to the hill we climb, that there's a sense of faith and resilience. What it really evokes in me in her poems is this very strong sense of faith. And faith is a very loaded word for many, many people. And there's a lot of people who have allergic reaction to that word. Faith here doesn't mean religious faith or blind faith. Um, Sharon Salzberg has wrote a book on faith and she kind of articulated the faith in three different, the three different types of faith. The first type is bright faith, the faith that kind of uplifting and inspiring, like when we first discover something new and interesting and wonderful, like meditation, art, yoga. Um, and then there's a second type of faith, verified faith that to develop that, we actually, beyond that first step of finding the bright faith, we start questioning and wondering and doubting. And that is really good. She's, she actually said that the doubt is actually what helps us to investigate and verify for us, for us that faith, is it true for us? And then the deeper, the last deeper layer of faith is abiding faith. Is, it's the kind of faith that says when we, a lot of times, sometimes we follow some of our teachers, our favorite teachers or guidance that we believe in them. But let's say if they pass away or they no longer something, uh, we're not in the presence, do we still believe in our own Buddha nature? Do we believe in our own wisdom? And so there's a deeper faith that's in not in the presence of something. And that's kind of the faith that um, I feel in her poems. That for me, that there are two things that I was I was experiencing that I thought was could be ex interesting to explore is that abiding faith does not rely on immediate perception and experience. So it's a deeper truth and a larger presence that's beyond our mere perception. So in nature, and this is really true, um, when we could still go on nature retreats, that one of my favorite meditation, night sky meditation at night. But what I always find that fascinating is that the sun is right there at night. It's just that we don't see it. It's on the other side. We don't experience it, but it's actually always there. And on the other side of it, in the midst of the day, the stars are in the skies. They're still shining. We just don't see it. And, you know, the, the metaphor of the star, the, the sun is always behind rainy clouds, right? Those piercing, the warmth are there behind the clouds. So our experiences sometimes are shaped by our perception. It is our relative reality, but there is a larger presence there's a deeper truth that's beyond our perception, our immediate experiences. 
and it doesn't diminish it's an it's an and it's not an or it doesn't diminish our reality or our experiences in that moment but that we could also hold that larger truth at the same time and to remember that larger truth the sense of benevolence and love in that moment whatever our immediate experiences are so i think that was that to me is one type of abiding faith and it means that it's very easy that you know for me in new york right now it's beautiful sunny morning it's easy to forget that about that and then what's we're cultivating in meditation is to kind of really soak in our immediate experiences and take it in so that while in darkness we remember that that we'll remember those experiences that we have the the if we have experiences of groundedness in courage resilience that they're within us that we could dig into that um and then there's a second type of abiding faith is really about the quality of heart it is activation active participation with life so sharon salzberg said that faith is a verb sada in sanskrit it literally means to place the heart, um, to place the heart upon so sada suggests that we step into the unknown and be open to life even when it's uncertain and it's uncontrollable so to me that really resonating <clears throat> so it's not a passive surrendering and just kind of in a naive cliche way of thinking while well, the sun's going to rise again the sun will come again tomorrow it's an active participation of what she wrote in the poem that we can be the light that while in darkness you you're not simply waiting for the dawn to come upon us but that you can be the light in that darkness so it's a quality of openness and resilience while we are going through challenges and uncertainties that comes with life um that is also abiding faith um so that's kind of something that really inspired me this week um so i would end that with the last line that she wrote when the day comes we step out of the shade a flame and a fray the new dawn blooms as we free it free it for there's always light if we only brave enough to see it if we're only brave enough to be it. So let us sit together. And find that easy position, a sense of natural ease. If it's early, your body's still kind of tired, it's okay. Just want to find a comfortable position that when you could be have a sense of ease, but also alertness. In whatever position you are, sitting down, lying down, see if you could feel the body touching the earth feeling the earth beneath us. And sensing the sky above us. And sense the ancestors on our back. And this huge human body between the earth and the sky, round it. If you feel the, if you Feel your breath coming from the center of the earth, supporting you, infusing in your body.
on your out breath to release anything that you no longer need back to the center of the earth. And as you breathe, you sense anywhere in your body that needs energy, healing, and send your breath there along with light. You go wherever your body's needed, in whatever color that you envision it, in whatever density that you find most healing. If you find that kind of ungrounding in a way, then feel your body touching the earth again. Find your sense back. You could, whatever I say that doesn't serve you could just totally disregard it. You could put your hands, palms down on your knees to feel the sense of grounding. and pull your palms up for the sense of openness and receptivity. If your thoughts and emotions arise, just imagine that there are clouds passing by a still lake. Your awareness is the lake. Thoughts and emotions come and go, they're reflections, but they're not the lake.
where can you soften? Are there are any holdings in your body that you could let go of?
even as you sense your thoughts and emotions and experiencing them, can you also sense the ever presence of your awareness? Can you sense both at the same time?
whatever you are experiencing, whether it's wonderful light or a difficult experience, kind of slowly, fully let it soak in and then let it pass and come back to your anchor, whatever that is, your breath, your hands, your body touching the earth. Come back gently to the anchor over and over again. The last minute of our meditation, just express our gratitude. May each of us find our belongings and our abiding faith. May our ancestors continue to bless our spirit and our work. May our humble and sincere intention and action sow seeds that create conditions for life for our generation and future generations. May our faith bring healing, love, and aliveness to us, to each other, to our nation, to all humanity, and to all life on earth. May our sit this morning benefits all beings everywhere. <laughs> 